بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصلك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Verily all praise be to Allah We praise him and seek his forgiveness We seek protection in Allah from the evil of our own souls Whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever Allah allows to go astray no one can guide I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and messenger of Allah Allah tells us in the Quran that all oh, you who believe fear Allah according to his right and die not but as Muslims thereafter listen to it that the best of the word is that a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of the path is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and anything but that is an innovation and all innovations are misleading and all misleadings lead to hellfire. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about one of the most important principles in Islam on numerous occasions. And it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the Muslim with. It is something where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the believer to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is something that if we were to apply or implement in the right way, then it will protect us from many of the problems or all of the problems of this world. Allah tells us in the Quran that inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. That verily prayer is there that stops a person from committing vile acts of sin and staying away from the th and stay makes them stay away from anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes it is about salah it is about prayer now many at times we find ourselves in a situation that I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me in the Quran about salawat about prayer we find it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the five daily salawat in the Quran. Sometimes people say that it has not been mentioned. It is mentioned in the Quran in numerous verses. For subhanallah hina tumsuna wa hina tusbihun. And glorify and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mornings and the evening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the early part of the day, at the two ends of the day, and in the early part of the night and at night time, different places. We find in the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where he mentions that whoever prays and takes care of the five daily prayers and takes care of the ruku and the sujood and the khira and the wudu and everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect this person from the hellfire so there are numerous occasions numerous verses and hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that mentions this the question comes my brothers and sisters what is the reason that I am offering my salah I'm offering my prayer but yet I am still committing sins what is the reason that I am still not being protected? What is the reason that I'm still, you know, finished the salah and I'm not, within the salah I start my prayer and I'm not concentrating? What is the reason? I am a Muslim. I believe in Allah. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of my heart. But yet it, when it comes to salah and what Allah tells me that it will protect me from everything, Every sin, every ma'asi, every problem, I don't find it. I don't find tranquility in my salah. There are numerous books that have been written by scholars. And I want to mention some of the points related to it. That what is this salah? What are the actions within the salah? We know we pray because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Inni an Allah. Allah says that verily I am Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one worthy of worship except me. Fa'budni. Worship me. Salah and offer the prayers. Allah, it's a command from Allah. We know this. But what is the wisdom of raising your hands during the takbir? What is the wisdom behind reciting the Quran and ruku and sujood? 
So Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, one of the greatest scholars mentions this. And I would like the brothers and sisters to pay attention. For it may be that inshallah this will help us in building that broken relationship between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes to salah, the prayer, it has to be understood that it is something so great that we need to take it as that great that this is an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah blesses those who believe in him. Then to prepare for it, you make wudu. And it is mentioned from the scholars, one of them being Sufyan ibn Uyina uh, that it is mentioned that when he would prepare for salah and he would make wudu, his face would go pale. And he would be asked, that, what, what is the situation? Why, are you, why have you gone all pale? He said, because I'm about to stand in front of Allah. My or your situation is that most of the time we are laughing and joking with each other. We're not concentrating. And subhanallah, from the greatest of the wisdoms that it is mentioned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the, the scholars mentioned, that one of the greatest wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordaining nawafil, sunnas before salah, is to prepare a person because now he or she is going to stand in front of Allah. So that the mind is prepared that now I am going to literally stand in front of Allah in fard. So you clear your mind, you clear your mind of any issues, you clear your mind of any problems, anything that you may have in the society, you're clearing yourself, you make your wudu, you're preparing your mindset. Then you come and you do your sunnas or the nawafil when you come into the masjid. It is to prepare yourself, not just to come and do your salah. It is to prepare yourself because you will be standing in front of Allah. And from the wisdoms it is mentioned, my brothers and sisters, that when you say takbir, when we say takbir, it is saying Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. From what Allah is the greatest? Allahu Rabbul Alameen. Allah is the Rabb of the Rabb of all the, the whole of the universe, the seven heavens and the earth and anything that we see and we don't see. Maliki Yawmiddin, he's the, the, the master of the day of judgment. Khalaqa samawati wal ard. He is the one who has created heavens and the earth. And there is nothing in this dunya that is not known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the ones the universe. And subhanallah, if we look at the salah, Allahu Akbar is the only statement that is repeated again and again and again and again to remind oneself that you are standing in front of the greatest. So you don't have to worry about anything else, focus. The scholars mention when you raise your hands and you say Allahu Akbar, it is to decorate the salah. It is to beautify the salah. And some mention that it is as you, have forget you are forgetting everything from this dunya. And you're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after you start your salah, what should be the situation? It is mentioned from the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we praise Allah. We say thana, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa wa astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. That you are making praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All glory is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We testify that there is no one worthy of worship except you. And to you we ask for, for forgiveness for our shortcomings. Or there is only thana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are praising Allah. This is again praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the adab and the etiquette of making dua is that we praise Allah before we do anything or we ask him anything. And the scholars mentioned that after doing the sana, after reading the sana, what do we do? We recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha is known as Umm Al-Kitab. It's known as Umm Al-Quran. It's known as the book of the, 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 the mother of the book. It is known as the scholars mentioned that if you, there were over 300 plus suhuf, the scriptures revealed to many of the prophets or so forth. Don't do anything during the khutbah. The, don't use the phone, please. So there were many scriptures revealed to many other prophets and many before. And the scholars mentioned if you were to combine all of them and understand or would like to understand the message of all of those scriptures, you look at Surah Al-Fatiha. And if you want to understand what is in Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, you look at the Quran. If you want to combine all of the scriptures and understand what is mentioned in those scriptures, you look at the Quran. And if you want to understand what is in the Quran, you look at Surah Al-Fatiha. And if you want to understand what is in Surah Al-Fatiha, you look at Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. That to you we worship and to you we ask for everything. So it is mentioned by the scholars that when you say takbir, Allahu Akbar, and you understand that you're standing in front of Allah, 
And then you praise him, you glorify him. You are preparing to read the something which has been given by the greatest. Allah is the greatest and he, Allah, he makes you recite the greatest, i.e. his kalam, i.e. The, the Quran. Look at the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran is not to be recited when you are in ruku or sujood. Quran, the, the status of the Quran is that you only recite it when you are standing. Yes, when we are out of the salah, we can recite it while sitting down and lying down. No problem, Prophet ﷺ did it. But when it comes to the prayer by itself, it is only to be done when you are standing up. So all of this is preparing to recite the greatest word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the Quran. So we say the takbir. We do the thana. And then we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And Surah Al-Fatiha, how amazing is this Surah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and it is mentioned in the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says that Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided it between the abd and Allah. As-salatu qasamtu as-salata bayna wa bayna abdi nisfain wa li abdi ma sa'ala. That I have divided the salah, the prayer between me and my slave, and my slave will have what he asks for. So when we start by saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan al rajim I seek protection in Allah from the rejected shaitan. It is to forget everything that is there, and the focus is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, as if that all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most merciful. Allah thinking Allah and believing Allah deserves the worship that I am going to just do. And when we make dua, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies that my slave has praised me. Huh? My slave has glorified me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on repeating to every verse that we recite. Hamadani Rabb Abdi, that when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that Allah says that my slave has praised me. Then when we say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Athna alayhi abdi, that my slave has glorified me. And then we say, Maliki yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majjadani abdi, that glorified, he has glorified me and submitted to me to another riwayah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, Allah says this is between me and my slave and he will have what he asks for. Allah says that this is what my slave has asked me for and he will, this is for my servant and he will have what he has asked me for. To show my brothers and sisters that when I concentrate or if I concentrate, I will see my salah or the, the, the condition of my prayer and my attitude in this life change and improve. To think that Allah is in front of me. And we know Allah subhanahu wa hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you worship, when you pray, Allah is in front of you. Allah is above the heavens, but Allah is in front of you when you are focusing. The hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you worship Allah as if you can see him. Surely you can not see him, but he can see you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us pray, prepare for this. Glorify Allah, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say takbir, and then recite the greatest of the verses, i.e. the kalam, which is Quran, while standing up. Now it doesn't finish over here, subhanAllah. When we recite the ayat of the Quran, we say Allahu Akbar again to go into ruku. When we go into ruku, the Prophet Sallallahu said that fa'adhimu, that glorify Allah, honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say subhana rabbi al Azim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is great and all greatness is for him. And we keep on saying and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the only part where we don't mention Allahu Akbar, we say Sami Allahu liman hamida, that all praises for Allah subhanahu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who praises him. Rabbana wa lakal hamd, and all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because we will now enter to the greatest part of the salah. And as scholars mentioned that all of this preparation, making wudu and nawafil and getting ready and standing in front of Allah and saying the takbir and doing the thana and then reciting the Quran, the Surah Fatiha, the Ummul Kitab and reciting the ayat of the Quran and then going into ruku and glorifying him and coming back. It is to prepare for you to go to the greatest part of the salah and that is the prostration. That is to 
place the highest part of your body which is your forehead on the lowest part of the ground for who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for I will not do this for anyone other than Allah we will not do this for anyone other than Allah and subhanallah we find from the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would prolong his sajda would prolong his making dua why because this is the part where you are the closest to the Prophet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as per the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is the sajda which we know Yunus Alaihi Salam when he left when the when the whale swallowed him and he was in the depth of the sea in the in the darkness of the womb or the the stomach of the whale and the darkness of the sea and he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. All praises for you. Verily, we are from the wrongdoers. So we make dua. We, pro we, we ask Allah for forgiveness. We ask Allah for guidance. We ask Allah for everything. It is to prepare us for that part, i.e. the sajda. And subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, there is another point to remember. When we are reciting the Quran in the salah, from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are salawat, the prayers in which we recite loudly and they are the prayers in which we recite to ourselves scholars mention that when you are reciting the Quran loudly it is to to take you away from the calmness of the dunya that surrounds you the quietness of the dunya that is around you so when we recite Fajr in Fajr and Maghrib and Isha loudly it is to take you away from that quietness that is around you so that you can focus on the recitation of the Quran, for, of, of the Quran, the Kalam of Allah. And when you are in Dhuhr and Asr, because you are now busy with the whole, the daily life, when you come into the masjid to do the salah, it is to give you that peace and tranquility that you can focus on the recitation of the Quran. This is Allah. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us makes sense. Allahu Haqq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Haqq. And so when we look at the salah, when we look at the sujood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us prepare us and do a go in sujood because he deserves to be worshipped. Because it is his right that he needs to be worshipped. And it is his right that me and you worship him in the best possible manner. So yes, you will find that people will go in sujood and they will prolong the sujood because that is when you are closest. That is when you shed your tears, even standing up and going in sujood. That is when you make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let go of everything that's in dunya. Another point that the scholars mentioned, that when you are going in sujood, it is as if you are letting go of everything in this dunya. You're prostrating to the one who is the Rabb of the Alami. So you let yourself go and make dua to him. And then subhanallah, everything in salah is once. The ruku is once. The standing is once when, in one rakah. But the sajda are twice. So you do one sajda and then you sit back. When you sit back, what do you say? You say, Allahumma ghfilli warhamni. Oh Allah forgive me. Oh Allah have mercy on me. As if there are any shortcomings in, in, in it, maybe what you have covered. You go in sajda again. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. And similarly, once we finish one rakah, the second rakah is the same as the first rakah. Another wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when we pray Fajr, why do we prolong the, the Quran or the ayat of the Quran? Because when we go to sleep after Isha for all of that night, the evening salawat, the time that we have, we have not remembered Allah. So when we stand in Fajr, it is to remind ourselves for the time that has been missed and it is a preparation for us for the coming day. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for me and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants khair for me and you in this dunya. For Allah knows the value of this dunya, the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if in front of Allah the value of this dunya was equal to the, 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 fly, the, feather, the fly or one wing of the mosquito, then Allah would not even allow the non-Muslims to drink from this dunya. There is no value of this dunya. So when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminds me of focusing and giving me that gift of salah, it is to connect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is to remind myself and yourself, Allah 
wants me to have an everlasting good life in the akhirah and this is the way that I will be able to utilize, i.e. use the tools that Allah has given me and be close to him. So ikhwan al-karam and akhawat, brothers and sisters, everyone who has passed away and is six feet deep wants to come back to this dunya as Allah mentions in the Quran. They will not get this chance and opportunity again. They will not be given a time to come back to this dunya for their time is up. Sometimes we make dua for them and most of the times we don't make dua for them because that is the nature of this dunya and the same thing will happen with me and you. Let us make sure that we rectify our relationship with Allah and concentrate in this salah. It is a beautiful gift given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are preparing for salah, when we are coming for salah, let it be the case that I am dressed in the best of the clothes. I'm covering myself. I'm smelling nice. And it is sad to say that when we are coming to the salah, our socks are smelling, our clothes are smelling, our mouth is smelling. Why? Because our breath smells because we, some of, some of the brothers and sisters smoke or wait. And you're not recognizing the fact that I am standing in front of Allah. And that is a problem because I don't recognize that what I'm going to be doing now takes away the, the goodness in the salah. That is one of the reasons because I'm not focusing, I keep on committing sins and go keep on going away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say to Bilal radiallahu anhu, uh, make the call, i.e. for the salah, because that will be the comfort of the hearts. So brothers and sisters, Allah blesses me and you. With an honor of that, we say la ilaha illallah. And subhanallah, so many of non-Muslims are accepting Islam because they are amazed at the, the benefit of the salah. The one we do it because Allah tells us, we do it because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. But let us improve the quality of our salah. Let us improve the quality of the salah and each and every one of us can do it. The way we spend our time on the phones, let it be the case that I spend my time to learn the meanings of the salah, to learn the meaning of the surahs, to learn the meaning of the duas. Why is it difficult for me to do so? Do I not want to be from those who Allah loves? Do I not want to be from those that who love Allah? Do I not want to be from those who inshallah when they are in the grave will not have the punishment? Do I not want to be from those that when they are asked about the salah on the day of judgment as the first question, they will be able to answer it and go. This is one of the first questions that will be asked. So many of the brothers and sisters are taking the, the salah, the concept of this prayer as if very easy. Take the case of an example in the Fajr salah. Hardly any youngsters or hardly two, raka, two, two, two rows of, of, uh, of saf in the masjid. Where are all the six, seven hundred people? that we find on Jum'ah, or oh, brother, we pray at Salah, uh, at home. Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, numerous hadith, if you offer Salah in the house without any valid reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I wish that I would take a group of companions, take the wood and then burn their homes. No excuse. I'm working, Allah is the one who gives me work. I have responsibilities, Allah is the one who deals with and takes care of the responsibility. So let it be the case, my brothers and sisters, that this reminder comes as that I need to improve the quality of my prayer. And everything in Salah that I do has a reason. Sometimes I will understand it and sometimes I will not. Let it be the case that I make an effort to learn about it and improve my relationship with Allah. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه Another point brothers and sisters and we should not forget and we should not feel tired of discussing this it is about the oppression that is taking place on all of our brothers and sisters around the world. And it is happening pure because of the reason that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
May it be people in Burma, may it be people in China, may it be people in Syria, may it be people in Palestine, Gaza, that is the case. This happened with the prophets before us, this happened with the Prophet وسلم, and this happened with us. And this will happen with the generations who will come after us until the day, until the day of judgment. What matters, again, as we have said it on numerous occasions, what am I doing in order to solve the situation or in order to work towards it? There is no, there's a very clear answer that we have to do something. Now, according to your ability, you may be able to voice your concern. You may be able to write. You may be able to speak with your MP. You may be able to stop buying the goods that support this oppression. You may be able to, and you are able to do something. It is not that you are not able to do anything. You are able to make dua for the brothers and the sisters. You may be able to make dua and send charity for them. You're able to do so many things. And let it be the case, which is, and let it be known, that for us to sit over here and pray in the comfort of this masjid is not an, a, a proof that Allah loves us and Allah does not love the people who are going through the difficulty. It may be the other way around. Or it may be that Allah is testing them with the, the trials and the tribulations of going through this hardship of oppression and being killed by IDF and the Zionist regime. And it could be that I am being tested by the opportunity that what khair, what goodness can I do in order to stop this dhulm and oppression. The dua is, goes without saying that we have to make dua. It goes without saying that we have to help them and send whatever aid we can send. It goes without saying that we speak our, with our local, local counselors and the MPs, we speak with the government, voice these concerns. Whatever can be done, do it and do not think that our responsibility is lifted or has been lifted. It is everyone's responsibility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us from the people who love him and Allah loves them. May Allah bring us from the people who will bring about a change and remove this oppression from all the brothers and sisters around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to stand on Islam firmly. May Allah give us the tawfiq to understand the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us from the people who recite his word in the best possible manner and understand it and implement it in their life. اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين واحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين